cast tonight at 11. 21 years ago, a New York writer turned Savannah upside down by telling the world all of the hostess city's dirty little secrets. The city was at first aghast, but then as the tourists and tourism dollars poured in, we became gracious all over again. Now John Barrett has a new incarnation of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, a meta book. And while he was in town promoting that, we took the opportunity to ask him the question that hadn't been asked before. He came racing back in the room, crazed, screaming out. His right arm was down by the side, and he said, I'm leaving tomorrow, but <laughs> you're leaving tonight. And he took a pistol and pointed it dead at me. Now, if you never had that done, That's how Jim Williams portrayed his deadly encounter with Danny Hansford on May 2nd, 1981. A position that he maintained through four trials until he was finally acquitted. But most people John Barrett isn't so sure. Is, what do you think happened that night? My own private opinion yes. is that they got into an argument and Jim shot Danny. That's what happened, I think. Um, and I always did. And I. I uh, be, why uh, did I not say so? I did say so, but I didn't say so outright. I said so very in a very subtle fashion. There are two places in the book where I make it very clear where I stand. When Jim dies of a heart attack at the end, I said he fell behind the desk in the very spot he would have fallen in if Danny Hansford had actually fired fired a gun and the gun uh, and then the shots had found their mark. The other time is Minerva saying, well, he, Mr. Jim lied to me, he lied to the court, and he lied to me, and justice ain't been done yet. So the dead boy is working against him beyond the grave. I didn't come out and say he's guilty because, number one, he was found innocent. You have to respect that. And number two, I didn't have actual physical proof. I just knew. And I have to say, a lot of Jim's friends just knew. And you can talk to him today. Uh, but he died right after being acquitted. What does that say? Barrett is the author of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, the book that was the spark that lit Savannah's tourism fuse back in 1994. Midnight has sold more than 5 million copies worldwide. Perhaps more importantly, it was the rage of the literati. It was featured in national media that reached tens of millions of eyes and ears. By the millions, those eyes and ears came to see what all the fuss was about in Savannah. Pale moon shining on the fields below. Barron believes that was only fitting because the city herself was a main character. How easy was it to make Savannah a character in the book? Which really is, it is. The city is a good is a question character. because it was easy as pie. Savannah is a character. And a lot of reviewers caught on to that. And they said, there's this man, there's the guy who has the poison, there's the man who shot somebody. And, but they reviewed, many reviewers said, the main character of this book is Savannah. And that's right on. It is. Can you appreciate the way the Savannah has changed in the years, not only since the book, but in a large part because, because of the book? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it all has to do with uh, tourism, I guess. People reading the book, um, wanting to see the place where it all happened, right. uh, having enjoyed the book, I suppose, <laughs> and knowing that uh, there's a um, magical city at the other end of this. <laughs> A packed house showed up at the Jepson Center recently to see Berendt in a rare public appearance. My first introduction to Savannah was through the movie Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. And now I live here. We read the book, we saw the movie, now we can see the author. As much as the city is a character in the book, so too is Berendt, a visitor to Savannah discovering her intriguing charms. Barron says that the key element of his writing style was access to the workings of his players. I sort of push myself to push myself onto people. And if you do it tactfully enough, politely enough, people will say finally, you know, okay, sure, I'll talk. So it's, it's a big effort to get inside. I, I had to do this in, in, in Venice, Italy, too, where it's doubly difficult because I had to master Italian and get inside and and talk to people. But if a tourist goes to Savannah, they won't see the 
inside lives that I was able to get to unless they somehow get in into people's homes. The same is true in Venice. You can take a, a Vaporetto down the uh, can, uh, Grand Canal, and you can see the wonderful pa palaces, but you won't get inside unless you somehow arrange to do so. I take you inside. And they would say to me, uh, why don't you come uh, this, uh, this after come this afternoon? Uh, come for drinks. Come at four. We can start drinking earlier. So very often, by the time I was finished talking to somebody in their living room, they were, had had several drinks. That, that's their doing. I didn't force anybody to drink. But this would happen on occasion. Barrett's relationship with some of his characters is friendly, born of mutual admiration. But he is not friendly with everybody. Or rather, they're not friendly with him. When's the last time you were in Mercer House? I am not welcome in Mercer House. I'm not. But his most lavish praise is reserved for the central figure in the book that made him rich. I have to say, he was living at home the whole time I was here because he had been in jail for two years, then was released, and while I was researching my book and writing it, he was in Mercer House, and available to me, and he was hilariously funny, very articulate, very bright, a fascinating person. So I would call on him many times, and he helped me with information about lots of stuff I was interested in here. So that was, he was part of the atmosphere as well. How lovely to see you out there. Oh, Jim, I'd get out of bed for you any time. <laughs> Less fascinating is his opinion of the movie made from his book, directed by Clint Eastwood with a star-studded cast who he thinks got it wrong. You leave me not. In the new Midnight app, there are actual audio recordings that Berendt contrasts with Kevin Spacey's characterization. You can hear both voices. And you hear the real Jim Williams's voice for once, not Kevin Spacey's very skewed and off-center uh, version of it. And you hear Danny Hansford. Part of the reason for his disdain is an author's pride and need for control. From the beginning, Barrett insisted on being the sole person shaping the images created by Midnight. The photos here might be the first time people have seen them. I didn't want photographs for the book. I didn't want to compete with photographs because photographs are... It's, it's a moment frozen in time, and uh, <clears throat> that moment might be the wrong moment. I mean, if it's a tragic character, you have a picture of somebody laughing. <laughs> this is the, the tragic character. But with my words, I can portray the person. I can create a portrait that, that evolves through the story. Happy, sad, excited, or dead, or whatever. So <clears throat> it's much more to the point to have a, a, a verbal, a, a, a prose description that proceeds along the, the lines of the book and the plot and the atmosphere. As a, ca a snapshot can't do it. Tonight, in this city, we are announcing nothing short of the future of books. When we come back, We'll take you to the premiere party for the new Meta Book, a trendy evening with some of Savannah's most celebrated figures. In a world that runs at the speed of information, when it comes to news, you don't need your time wasted. That's why you can turn to WTOC 11 News to bring you news live as it happens, to focus on local stories and how they impact you where you live, to get you the news you need now, no matter where you are. For the stories that stay with you, there's only WTOC 11 News, live, local, now got hurt in a car wreck and now I'm swimming in medical bills and I don't know how I'm going to pay. Do something! Do something about it. Just pick up the phone and call me. I got hurt bad in a car wreck. The insurance guy keeps trying to get me to take a small offer. Do something! Do something about your car wreck and call me. I did something about it. I called Ken. He got me $125,000. Ken got me $300,000. Now, I can't guarantee you this kind of money. But if you've been hurt in a car wreck, do something about it. One call, that's all. When you volunteer, you get more than you give. Families who volunteer together often get more than they give. I'm teaching my children the importance of doing for others. It's just one lesson that volunteering as a family can provide. 
And when kids see their parents volunteering, it can change the way they see the world. Volunteer with your family. You'll get more than you think. Call the United Way of the Coastal Empire to find out about volunteer opportunities in your community. Or visit us at uwce.org. Everybody talks, everybody talks. It started with the whisper. People just can't stop talking about Ford. And now, during the Ford Summer Sales Event, get the best deals of the summer on Fusion with EcoBoost. The Fusion is amazing. Ford is the brand more people buy and buy again. So don't miss the Ford Summer Sales Event. Now, during the Summer Sales Event, get a Fusion with zero for 72, plus $1,000 and no payments for 90 days. Only at your local Ford dealer. In early March, the Midnight Meta Book team brought their show to Savannah to debut what is being called the future of books. The Meta Book, an iPhone app, includes the book itself, a dramatic reading, audio recordings including conversations between Jim Williams and Danny Hansford, and photos galore. Jim tells me in one of the tapes about how he prepares for his Christmas parties. In another tape, he tells about how he, prepared, how he met Jacqueline Onassis in his house. And those went right into the book. I might have edited what he said so that it fits on a page, but it's word for word. Um, you might recognize some of the uh, words that he, that he tells me. The app is a work in progress. It can be updated with new information, including a notice that no one at the Jepson Center wanted to hear. So when there's a musical, you may wake up one day and find that uh, there's a song on your, on your Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil app. And eventually, I have to say it, I hope they'll include it, and I hope they'll treat me well, but eventually my obituary will be on it as well. Thank you. We'll end on a, on a fun note, and that's it. A little dark humor is to be expected from a man who immortalized many of the quirks and color of Savannah and brought millions of tourists to our town. That is